Jan Stein. Join me as I do interviews with leaders in the field of artificial intelligence from across the world. We speak about the business relevance of artificial intelligence and we also speak about the future. Is it to be feared or to be embraced? Please subscribe at my website for updates on future interviews. My passion for artificial intelligence is not the technology itself, exciting as it is. My passion is about how this technology can change and improve the lives of people, from healthcare to education to social justice. That is why I was so excited when Dmitry Konevsky, a research scientist at Google, agreed to my interview. Dmitry, who has been deaf since early childhood, is the creator of Live Transcribe, an application with the potential to give people who are deaf or hard of hearing greater independence in their everyday interactions. Prior to joining Google, Dmitry was a research staff member in the speech algorithm department at IBM. He also worked at the Max Planck Institute in Germany and the Institute for Advanced Studies at Princeton. This was one of the most emotionally moving and inspirational conversations I have had to date. Join me as we listen to Dimitri, to his story about his amazing career and work, and about how artificial intelligence and machine learning technology can shape a positive future for us and our children. It is nice to meet you and thank you for invitation to talk to you. I saw your videos, your other interviews of others. These are very interesting. Thank you so much, uh, Dimitri. So, so for me, I'm very interested in artificial intelligence and the related technology, but I'm not really, my main interest is not in the technology itself, even though it's very exciting. It's about how we can apply it to make life better for people. And, and that's why I'm so excited to speak to you because um, you, you've done work that's made life better for people. So Dimitri, maybe to start off with, tell us a little bit about yourself, your history, and then also the work you are doing at, at Google at the moment. My background is mathematician. I received PhD at the Moscow State University in algebraic geometry. I then emigrated to Israel. I worked at the Wilson Institute of Science at the Max Planck Institute in Germany and the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. I lost hearing when I was one year old. So I also developed in Israel wearable first in the world tactile devices multi-channel tactile devices. I had startup in Israel many years ago that sold this device. So, so I already had experience with speech recognition. When I lived in America, I decided that I need to improve speech recognition to help to people to communicate who do not hear. Therefore, I started to work at IBM Research in speech recognition team. I thought that solution to speech technologies is five years away. Five years passed. It took more five years. I thought more five years, more five years. 
so 20, 25 years passed when I moved to Google to speech research, we finally developed at Google speech recognition that became so accurate that I could develop many applications that I'm using now, like live transcribe that help me to understand you, and a phonia that help others understand my accent. That is a wonderful... Understand my accent. That is a wonderful, Dimitri. It's, is, and is this technology widely distributed? Are there many, many people using it? Or is it still in its um, infancy, if you would, from a wide use point of view? This is a live transcribe. It is widely available. Many million people are using it. It is available for free in most of Android devices. It is available in H languages. In a phone, it understand my voice. It's still a research project. It is available for testers, external testers, people who have non-standard voices, like people with LLS or who have strokes and other difficulties to speak, they can contact Google and become testers. Testers. And, and, and does this system take a long time to recognize your own voice and accent, or is it fairly instant to use? This is a good question. A phone in order to understand my voice, I recorded many sentences. In fact, I recorded 30 hours of my voice. This is a lot. I did this during one year. I did not start it immediately to use it for everything. To use it for everything. First, I recorded my planet presentation my planet presentation and trained for my future presentation. So I spoke exactly how I recorded. But after I added more and more presentations, it started to understand me everything. And so I was not needed to record in advance anymore. But of course, we understand that others cannot record so many hours. So we are developing methods to reduce number of hours for others to record. They first can record a few commands to talk to voice interactive systems like Google Home or Alex and others. So for this, they just can record a few phrases. And slowly, slowly, they can add more phrases. And also, you hope to make clusters of people who have similar non-standard speech. Then what we develop for this cluster, we allow to another person who came and who has similar pattern of non-standard speech, it can understand that person. And, and does it work in a noisy environment, like if you would go to a shopping mall, for instance? 
life transcribed works very well in most of noisy environment because it was used YouTube videos. Many hundred thousand hours of YouTube videos where you could have all kind of noises. Therefore, life transcribe works very well. I'm using it in cafeterias, in subway, in any noisy place, in any noisy place. And, and so, so you have to read on your mobile device, but can it work on a device similar to Google Glass or something like that? So you have it in front of you and you don't have to look at a mobile handset? Yes, in principle, any glasses that have digital display that it just replicate what you have in your mobile device. So you have many digital glasses that if you connect this to mobile that has any transcription, not only live transcribe, other companies also develop live transcription. Then you can see this in glasses. In fact, more than 10 years ago, I developed first glasses with transcription at IBM. If you go to Google and search for my name and search for images, you immediately see me with IBM glasses that have transcription. Amazing. And if you, if you are sitting somewhere, say in your home, and somebody's coming from without your eyesight, your vision, so from behind and they speak to you, will this application alert you that, so you might not be looking at your phone at the time, will it alert you that somebody is speaking to you? Yes. Live transcribe also has information about sound and environment. If somebody laughs, if dogs barking, if somebody is knocking, knock, it shows immediately. So if you could produce from your place, for example, baby crying, I can show live transcribe and you will see baby crying. That is fantastic. Um, so, so the reason I connected with you on LinkedIn some weeks back, I think, is I watched the documentary. And today I tried to remember which documentary it was, and I couldn't find it. But it, it, it um, had you on, on the documentary talking about this technology, and it was fascinating. Um, it, what From people with other disabilities, perhaps not just hearing disabilities, but people who are blind, for instance, um, I assume that the scope of how this technology can help people is vast. Can you take us maybe through some of the other possibilities that this technology can do for people with, with other disabilities? Machine learning is fantastic help to many people with disabilities. Actually, let me tell that people with disabilities are first adopters of machine learning technologies. And they often help to drive machine learning technology when it is not that perfect. And they help to drive them to mainstream. Let me even first start with example of speech recognition. For many years, speech recognition was not good. It has so many speech recognition errors that only people who did not hear 
were using it because they could understand what other people are talking if there are errors. So they help to maintain projects to develop speech recognition. It helped to maintain projects after it developed into good speech recognition. So blind people can use that show them direction at Google. We develop devices that if you point near your phone on some object, it tells you what do you see. You even can read how much money you have. <laughs> and you can use Google Maps in some situation to show accessible route so people who have difficulties to move mobile difficulty it can show you success ex, good route where is transparent that is accessible and several years ago it was developed spoon spoon for people who have Parkinson whose hands shake so they could eat and this spoon was terrible and even such good thing you may be see that I sometimes repeat it again what I'm telling because I'm watching how it transcribes me. If I see it made errors, I change my pronunciation. So I start to speak better. It means that using speech recognition help people to improve pronunciation. So people who have accent, strong foreign accent, they can take life transcribe in different uh, languages and they can start to tell until they start to understand them. So this is interesting different application and life transcribe here to learn to read because if you do not know how to read you can sell this word in another language or in your own language if you have dyslexia. It prints this and you read this and because it printed what? Because it printed what you just spoke. It is easy for you to learn to read. So the mirror application for people with different abilities, either to improve abilities or to compensate them using machine learning. And is this technology, I would assume, embedded in the likes of Google Meet? So if, if you have a Google Meet meeting, you don't, it's embedded in the application already? Yes. Google Meet already has caption. So everybody can read this caption. So Google Meet is very convenient. And also accuracy of caption in Google Meet could be better than of life transcribe because Google Meet get audio from your location. Therefore, it's local audio for a speaker. It, if I'm using Google Meet, not if I'm using Google Live, if I'm using Google Live Transcribe, I get audio through speaker. So sometimes it gives 
more errors. Mm-hmm. And, and what do you think are the potential educational applications? So, for instance, to teach, so my son is six, he's learning now to write. Um, he's using, I've got a Google Home, so he loves using it because he doesn't have to write uh, any instructions, he just speaks to it. But is there ways of teaching young children like my son to write earlier or, or, any, or any way, uh, from a wider perspective point of view, educational applications to this kind of technology? You are right that technology, smart technology, allows children to cheat. <laughs> cheat. So children can get answers directly without trying to do some work. <laughs> it is indeed. But otherwise, now when we have more distance learning, and it's more difficult for children to go to school, machine learning is especially good, could be especially helpful to help children to learn remote, to learn remotely. There could be a lot of possibilities. It can create random questions. It can check if you answer it correctly. And probably when we say that you want your son to learn to write, to write, I assume you mean handwriting. Yes. So probably your son could use tablet, to use tablet, to use tablet that understand handwriting. Then you could run, it would convert handwriting to type a text, and you could use text to speech. So your son could hear what he wrote and get feedback, it also would make for him interesting to start to write. It will become a game. I have two twins granddaughters. So when I come to them, they are in Montreal. We often play together. They use life transcribe. They try to talk to life transcribe in different languages, in Russia. And it's interesting for them. They try to imitate animal sounds because light on the shows them dog barking. So this technology becomes good play with children. That is amazing, uh, Dimitri. If we look into the future now, in and I think it's difficult to answer that question sometimes, but in five or ten years from now, what applications do you think this kind of technology will grow into? What is impossible now that will be possible in a few years, do you think? I think it will be much better machine learning technology that help people with mental disabilities. This is very important, especially now, because this pandemic that forces people to sit at home increases a lot of mental illnesses. So all assistive devices that monitor people the people who forget quickly, or people who do not know what to tell, how to move. It will also start to help people 
Худрак Адиктит. На спешим ротов пипель пикелем драк аддиктит. Вот only to drag, but even to display, to computer games. So I think in five years machine learning will be much smarter and will start to resolve these problems. What about people who are the millions and millions of poor and disadvantaged people who are disabled? Are there programs through the United Nations and other organizations where this technology is embraced into helping people who could otherwise not afford a smartphone um, or potentially even have internet connection? What kind of initiatives are you aware of in the world or you might be working with or Google might be working with to help poor people, billions of poor people with this kind of technology? I'm a bit aware what is done at Google. For example, in India, sharing devices are very expensive. So people who do not share cannot afford these hearing devices. So you develop technology that helps. Life transcribe can uh, be worked in very cheap Android. So people who do not hear in India can use life transcribe instead of hearing devices to communicate with people. And the technology like sound amplification that help people to listen better in the noises. It's also available for free in Android. So many millions of people who by some reason do not have money to buy hearing devices or do not want to use hearing devices can use this program in Android that improves audio, that improves audio and removes noise so they can hear better. And of course, I believe that other companies also are trying to develop this. One of the things that other companies and Google is trying to develop is develop machine learning system to understand sign language automatically. People who sign, it's very difficult for them to communicate in the whole world. So it's time to claim to allow them to communicate using machine learning is something that there are programs to collect data to develop such system around the world. I cannot tell you how this excites me, uh, Dimitri. I, I recently spoke to someone who's doing research in, in breast cancer and how machine learning and image recognition can help diagnose cancer quicker and and I'm speaking to you today I just realize again that because I think there is an element of this technology forcing us into a bleak future if we think of weaponization and and other things ethical issues and so forth but it just makes me realize again how many good things we can do with this technology so it's, it was amazing to speak with you, Dimitri. I'd love to follow the work you're doing and I'd love to have a follow-up conversation in a few weeks to unpack some of these issues even more. Thank you out of the depth of my heart. This is so inspiring. You're welcome. Thank you for this interview, interesting questions.
in the parthometer to skip, just short statement. I have three sons. They're all involved in machine learning, and two of them are medical doctors who do a lot of research and application for medicine. So this is another area where you can get a lot of information about this topic. I hopefully would love to speak to them as well. Um, so I'll reach out to you on, on email, Dimitri, but thank you so very much. This was so inspiring. And um, when we publish this video, I, I think it will also inspire people. Let's work together. Let's use this technology to make life better for our fellow human beings. It was an honor, Dimitri, and I thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you too. Are you waiting for your our next communication? Certainly. I'll be in touch. All the very best. We'll speak soon. Mm -hmm.